When National Commander Andy Marshall took DAV's reins in August 2021, our organization was more than ready to officially kick off our second century of service to America's veterans. That National Convention in Tampa, Florida was the first time in two years that DAV had come together to elect new leadership and vote on essential resolutions affecting veterans nationwide. And Commander Marshall, a combat disabled veteran of the Vietnam War, has brought the necessary energy and resolve to lead our organization into the next century and beyond. I pledge to work tirelessly to ensure your voices are heard as we continue our 100 year mission of service. Another highlight from the convention, DAV recognized our 2021 Outstanding Disabled Veteran of the Year, Mike McElhaney, a former Army Green Beret. He became one of the first casualties of the Afghanistan war when a 2,000 pound bomb was mistakenly dropped on his position. Despite his grave injuries, including the amputation of his right arm, Mike has been instrumental in advocating for his fellow veterans. You know, I love veterans. I, I, you know, people ask me different questions. I'm like, well, they're my tribe. They're, you know, they're my people, and uh, and and so I, you know, you, there's always comfort there. The pandemic kept the National Disabled Veterans Golf Clinic from happening in 2021, but thankfully, many in-person events returned. DAV was grateful to see our annual 5K race return to downtown Cincinnati and the continuation of our virtual race nationwide. Participants were invited to walk, roll, run, or ride to give humble thanks to those who serve and keep the issues affecting veterans in the front of America's mind. Life across the globe has been upended for more than two years now. DAV was not immune to this reality, and as a result, we delayed our centennial celebration until we could safely mark this monumental occasion. As the country began to reopen over the past year, the stage was finally set for DAV to reflect on our past and truly begin our next hundred years of serving those who selflessly wore the cloth of our nation. Under Commander Marshall's leadership, DAV officially, though belatedly, marked our 100th anniversary by ringing in the occasion with the 1,000 pound centennial bell that pays homage to DAV's members, past, present, and future at our new national headquarters in Erlanger, Kentucky. But the celebration did not stop there as the Cincinnati Pops hosted an evening of patriotic music at Cincinnati Music Hall with the help of American Idol finalist Melinda Doolittle and the West Point Glee Club. God shed his grace on thee and like Since our founding more than 100 years ago, DAV has stood as the premier organization serving veterans as they make the life-changing transition from service member to civilian. A vital aspect of our ongoing mission of supporting veterans is to advocate on their behalf. In 2021, 48 DAV resolutions were included in federal legislation, 10 of which were adopted and signed into law. DAV has never been more confident in achieving our critical policy goals. Part of our advocacy includes our annual Midwinter Conference in Washington, D.C., and this year members could finally return in person to deliver DAV's message to lawmakers. During the event, Commander Marshall provided expert testimony in a joint session of the House and Senate Veterans Affairs Committees, laying out DAV's legislative priorities for the 117th Congress. DAV members were invited to watch the hearing virtually to mitigate any risks of COVID-19. Commander Marshall stated DAV's priorities of safeguarding VA healthcare and highlighted the need for equitable health outcomes for women and minority veterans. He used his personal experiences with a veteran whom DAV served to illustrate the need to improve mental health care and suicide prevention efforts. For all of our medical and scientific advances, we are still losing veterans each and every day 
due to their pain and despair. Together, we have the opportunity and the obligation to do better. Commander Marshall also offered strong support for legislation that finally addresses the litany of toxic exposures endured by veterans of all eras, one of DAV's most pressing critical policy goals. DAV, alongside other military and veteran service groups, spent much of the past year rallying support with the help of comedian and advocate John Stewart for the Honoring Our Pact Act. We were pleased to see the bill pass out of Congress and expect the President to sign it into law in the coming days. The act not only covers exposure to burn pits in Iraq, Afghanistan, and beyond, but also covers past and future military toxic exposures. I'm proud to say that in 2021, DAV Benefits Advocates interviewed over 290,000 claimants and filed more than 150,000 new claims for nearly half a million injuries and illnesses. And with more than 1.1 million veterans entrusting DAV with their powers of attorney, representing $25 billion in earned benefits, we remain second to none. As disaster struck across the nation and veterans and their family members found themselves in need of aid, DAV's disaster relief program was there, waiting to provide desperately needed assistance. For tornadoes, fires, and hurricanes, DAV was able to issue nearly $1.4 million in emergency funds. Since the disaster relief program's inception in 1968, DAV has dispersed almost $18 million to victims. Like so many Americans, seeking out and securing meaningful employment is paramount in the minds of veterans. In 2021, DAV and Recruit Military hosted 82 in-person and virtual career fairs with more than 19,000 attendees. Since 2014, DAV has connected more than 250,000 attendees with more than 158,000 job offers. Our already impressive employment program was bolstered this year with the acquisition of Patriot Boot Camp. Previously a DAV-sponsored nonprofit, Patriot Boot Camp helps veterans and their spouses with training and resources to empower them to own their own businesses and ultimately serve as employers. The now DAV Patriot Boot Camp is the result of an already remarkable program that saw the opportunity to grow and expand in scope and efficiency. DAV will now carry the torch that Patriot Boot Camp lit years ago, complementing DAV's employment program and its growing focus on service-disabled veteran-owned small businesses in the years to come. Because new members are vital to the success of our organization and its noble mission, DAV works hard to identify and connect with the veterans we serve. DAV's membership department continue to strengthen and bolster our more than one million loyal members by recruiting through its Recruit a Warrior program. This innovative initiative helps our members grow our organization as easily as a few clicks. Members can accrue recruitment points by simply emailing, texting, or sharing their personalized Recruit a Warrior links on social media. These points can be exchanged for DAV branded clothing, gear, and other rewards. The membership department has also initiated a new recruiting effort using SMS texting capabilities. Now, prospective members are not only invited to join our ranks via their phones, but information about DAV's programs and services can also be shared in a dynamic and exciting way. DAV's Transportation Network continued serving veterans in 2021. Last year alone, DAV volunteer drivers provided more than 160,000 rides to and from VA medical appointments. Across the nation, Volunteer drivers logged more than half a million hours of drive time across nearly 8 million miles, bringing veterans to and from VA appointments. DAV's fleet of vehicles stood ready to make the health care that veterans have earned more easily accessible. 
Since the transportation network began in 1987, DAV has donated more than 3,600 vehicles, while our oldest corporate partner, Ford Motor Company, has donated nearly 250 vehicles. And just as a reminder, we are always on the lookout for new volunteer drivers. Miracles Return to the Mountainside as DAV co-hosted the 36th Annual National Disabled Veterans Winter Sports Clinic with the Department of Veterans Affairs in beautiful Snowmass Village, Colorado. The event saw ill and injured veterans ascend to the Rockies to take part in adaptive skiing, fly fishing, snowboarding, sled hockey, snowmobiling, and curling. Held in person for the first time since 2019, this clinic recognized Marine Corps and Army veteran William Bud McElroy with the DAV Freedom Award. A disabled veteran returning to the clinic, Bud was seriously injured during a vehicle collision that caused his leg to be amputated. However, Bud didn't let his injury stop his civilian career as a firefighter or soldier in the Army Reserve. He went on to become the first individual to deploy to Iraq as an amputee. He was injured again in combat while rendering aid to Iraqi civilians and since has experienced a spinal cord ailment that requires him to use a wheelchair. But Bud's determination in the face of adversity was on full display in snow baths and served as inspiration for the other ill and injured veterans participating. So I was just going downhill fast, hit a jump, get some air. People always ask me, are you afraid of getting hurt? And then I'm looking at myself like, no, I'm in a chair, so I guess I'm not afraid of getting hurt anymore. DAV was proud to share the virtual stage with Theater of War Productions in April. Since 2009, Theater of War has connected communities with stories focusing on complex social issues. The collaboration between DAV and Theater of War featured live readings of the education of Corporal John Musgrave a fiery new memoir about the physical, emotional, and mental scars of the Vietnam War. Live readings featured actors Oscar Isaac, David Strathairn, and author John Musgrave, as well as Army veteran, DAV ambassador, and actor Greg Gadson. The Charitable Service Trust supports dozens of unique initiatives that provide ill and injured veterans rehabilitative and emotional therapy, transition assistance, employment support, emergency relief, and a range of other services. Last year, the Trust awarded $6.6 .6 million in grants to organizations dedicated to these causes. Additionally, the Trust has received the coveted four-star rating from Charity Navigator more than 15 times since first being evaluated in 2002 and two consecutive perfect overall scores in recent years. The acknowledgement speaks volumes about the Trust's careful and efficient stewardship of donated funds, as more than 95 cents of every dollar donated to the Trust went to programs that directly support veterans. The Trust awarded a total of $1.2 million to fund Save a Warrior, an Ohio-based nonprofit committed to ending the staggering suicide rate plaguing veterans, active duty military, and first responders. In 2020, $1 million was granted to support the construction and development of Save a Warrior's new National Center of Excellence for Complex Post-Traumatic Stress, and $200,000 was granted in 2021 for its programming. The new center, sponsored by DAV, broke ground in April and will provide a healing outlet for ill and injured veterans combating suicide and mental health issues. DAV continues to increase our efforts in reaching veterans, potential members, their families, and donors. And we're finding new ways to get in front of new audiences. We launched a partnership with Sinclair Broadcasting Group called Sinclair Cares, supporting all veterans. The joint venture encouraged volunteering to support veterans in their communities. As a major media company, Sinclair reached 40% of American households owning or operating nearly 200 local television stations nationwide. DAV also continued our partnership with Ultimate Fighting Championship and in November and December co-presented the fighter walkouts at Madison Square Garden in New York City and T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. This spring, 
DAV graced the stage at the Grand Old Opry in Nashville. The special Salute the Troops performance, sponsored by DAV corporate partner Humana, invited DAV members and their families to walk the red carpet. Disabled veterans reached new heights with DAV Ambassador C.C. Mazik participating in a zero-gravity parabolic flight by ascending to 32,000 feet before free-falling to experience weightlessness. The tests on board will help scientists make the future of space travel more inclusive. We also continued our partnership with Golden Corral through the restaurant's Military Appreciation Night. Each year, around Veterans Day, they provide free meals to veterans. In 2021, the annual event raised more than $500,000 for DAV, bringing the total to more than $17 million since the partnership began in 2001. Camp Corral, a one-of-a-kind summer camp for children of wounded, disabled, or fallen service members and veterans, came back in 2022, hosting 17 summer camps. To date, Camp Corral has served over 30,000 children with a military connection, the majority of whom have a parent who was wounded, made ill, or killed in service. Camp Corral helps these kids with experiences that help them overcome their unique challenges. Through DAV's Just Be Kids Scholarship Program, more than 5,500 children have attended the camp at no cost. DAV has donated more than $4.6 million to Camp Corral since 2014. DAV's public service announcements remain strong, generating 8.6 billion impressions in 2021. Always present by the side of veterans or their loyal loved ones, who have also sacrificed so that their loved ones could serve their country. While the DAV Auxiliary had yet another successful year, we bid farewell to National Adjutant Pat Kemper, who retired after nearly 40 years of service to veterans and their families. Pat began working at the Auxiliary in 1982 as a secretary. She rose through the ranks and was named Assistant National Adjutant in 2008 before serving as National Adjutant beginning in 2015. Under her leadership, the Auxiliary supported crucial efforts such as expanding Agent Orange presumptive status to Blue Water Navy veterans and improving caregiver benefits to post 9-11 veterans and their families. The Auxiliary is fortunate to maintain strong leadership with newly appointed National Adjutant Bunny Close, who took the reins in February. I can't thank our steadfast members enough for their continued commitment to their fellow veterans. I've never been prouder of our ranks or more confident in our future as I am today. As we all make strides to return to a more normal way of life, I hope to see more members engage their communities and advance the righteous cause of being there for those forever changed in service to us all. Here's to the next year serving alongside one another and keeping our promises to America's veterans, their survivors, and their families.